Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video today on the channel. We have Dr. Joel Furman. I've never done a video on Dr. Joel Furman before, really because it's not extremely sophisticated. And I'm not even trying to say that in an insulting way. It's it's the trite nonsense that you hear, that the trite tripe one could say. This video is very short. It's 5 minutes 22 seconds. I'm sure that I'll find a way to make it two hours long. It's called, Are Beans Important in Our Daily Life? Dr. Furman Exposes Truth! Good. Well, look, if Dr. Furman exposes the truth today, it'll be the first time he's ever done so. So, with that being said, we're just gonna jump directly into this. I was recommended this video by someone. In fact, actually, I'll go ahead and pull them up. Rick Van Den Berg. I probably pronounced that in the most American way possible, so I apologize if it's incorrect. But anyway, yes, I'm, I'm reacting to this. So, with that being said, let's waste no further time and jump directly into the video. I believe you're the one who planted the seed in me years ago, and, and, and I fought religiously, and I, I built up solely. Religiously? Well, we're off to a good start, aren't we? Plant-based ideology, a religion? Proof? That beans are the soil, that you can take all the foods, all the probiotics you want, but if you don't have the soil in there for them to grow, you're basically just flushing out of, out of your system. I love that. Uh, what does that mean? What are you talking about? Am I misunderstanding something? Are you talking about when you digest them or something? Because that's that's exactly right. It's the soil to the, to make them grow. That's right. Because beans in particular are rich in a uh, resistant starch, and the word yeah, exactly, which is a fibrous compound, very, very, very similar, if not really effectively identical to soluble fiber in terms of how it's digested. Well, in terms of how it's not digested, actually, you don't digest fiber at all, so it ferments in your gut in terms of soluble and resistant starch. The last I checked, if you can't digest something, you shouldn't be eating it. In terms of how the soluble fiber and the resistant starch are acted upon by the body and how they're metabolized, they're not, how they're processed is what we should say. They are the culprits when it comes to stripping the body of nutrients, actually, because it forms this gel-like structure, which also stimulates the production of mucus in the gut, which is somehow a good thing to have more of necessarily, which there's no evidence to support that. That's that's an opinion. It's theology. It's ideology. And with that gel comes a lot of nutrients. So anyway, cool. Good. Called resistant starch because it's resistant to enzymatic degradation. It means our enzymes don't break it down. Well, all fiber is resistant to that. <laughs> means when the when the can of beans or the cup of beans says 200 calories. We right, it doesn't have 200 calories. So when it says that, what, what you really meant to say here, what you're really meaning to say before you even get the words out is when a cup of anything says 200 calories, those calories are not in that food, first of all. That's the amount of calories that would be yielded from that food if you rapidly combust it in a bomb calorimeter. And last I checked, that's not what our stomach or our body does with food. You don't consume calories. They are photons of light. So anyway, I've gone on about this in the last four videos I've recorded. So I'm going to just keep it terse here. Well, it's not 200 calories because there's a percent of those. Well, yeah, exactly. It's not 200 calories. It's a cup of beans. Calories that are resistant to deg enzymatic degradation. They can't. Yes. It has a lot of that. It, it also has a lot of regular carbohydrates in there that are simple and are able to be digested and enter the bloodstream, wherein they will wreak havoc on the epithelial cells that line the arteries and to a lesser extent the veins and your hemoglobin, your red blood cells, and also all of the cells that are glucose dependent in terms of their uptake of glucose. Those are the ones that get damaged the most during hyperglycemic episodes like the kidneys and the blood brain barrier. They can't be broken down and absorbed. So they pass through us and are degraded by bacteria. And when the bacteria... They ferment it. They ferment it. Last I checked, if you cannot digest something, you should not be consuming it. What happens is it's fermented in the absence of oxygen, hence fermentation, which produces some alcohol, by the way, which isn't really a good thing. And it also ferments into aldehydes, which are toxic. But yes, it also ferments into short-chain fatty acids, primarily butyrate. And fortunately, we have a process in our bodies called ketogenesis, which results in the production of three ketone bodies, two of them primarily. The other one is negligible in terms of its concentration. Concentrations. Those are beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate. So there you go, beta-hydroxybutyrate. And for it to be oxidized, it's broken down in the same way, effectively. So fantastic. Great. So being in ketogenesis and deep ketosis means that you produce a lot of beta-hydroxybutyrate and it guarantees that you'll actually use it systemically and not only in a focal part of the small intestine where this fiber fermentation occurs. Good. Okay. Glad we got that straight. Change them, change the carbohydrate, these starches into fat. 
actually fat. Well, fantastic. You could also just consume fat and not consume carbohydrates, which would ensure that first of all, you're getting fatty acids directly from your food, but also that you're getting beta hydroxybutyrate production, which is considered to be super healthy. Now, there's no evidence to support the claim that anything is really healthy. And anyone that's watched my channel long enough knows that, but let's say it were, and it were absolutely established to be so. Well, first of all, it's fat. So that's interesting, but also, hey, we produce it all. We produce a lot more and it's guaranteed to be systemically used when you're in ketosis. How do you enter ketosis regularly and actually, you know, stay in it regularly? Huh? Well, you stop consuming carbohydrates to any significant degree, at least. Butyrate predominantly. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, look at that. Wow. I haven't watched this video before. But it happens so far down in the small intestines, the distal portion of the small intestines. Yes, exactly. Beginning of the large intestines. That right. So how much of that are you really using? 90% of those calories don't get absorbed into the bloodstream. They Not calories. You can't absorb something that has no rest mass. They're photons of light. 80% of the mass, perhaps, but mass and calories are not equivalent, so you can't say that, actually. Is 80% of the calories that result from that fermentation only a fourth of what the butyrate actually takes up, which would be 25% of that mass, for example? I mean, it's, you can't, they're, they're completely disparate. Anyway, how much of it are we talking about? And either way, it doesn't matter. It seems like it's the majority. What did I just say? So great, let's enter ketosis. Into the toilet bowl. So they increase stool fat. So Right, so why is that a good thing? So it increases bulk of stool. So why is that a good thing? If anything, that's probably a bad thing. We eat beans, we get more calories in the toilet bowl. You don't get calories. <laughs> Wow. And also, why is that a good thing? If anything, that's a bad thing. The majority of people in this country and in this world consume plants on a regular basis with a majority of it composing their diet. Therefore, the majority of their stool is composed of undigested plant matter, putting aside the bacteria that are in it. It's undigested plant matter. That should tell you something. Stop eating fiber. There's calories in our body. The carbohydrates- There's no calories in your body that are used in metabolic process. The only calories that exist in the body are the ones that are extremely ephemerally present to the point where they effectively don't exist at all, actually, that are the result of the breaking apart of bonds in exothermic reactions. 70% of the energy released from the breaking apart of bonds, at the energy created, one that's broken apart is really what we should say, out of f***ing thin air, is released to either entropy or it's used to actually heat the body. I was saying, you know, it's released to entropy, all of it. Well, entropy and also heating the body are two different things, technically, I guess, but either way, yes, it's about 70%. Anyway, stop saying this word. Calories that are there are absorbed very slowly, like a calorie every minute. As a <sighs> this man also, by the way, has said that meat eaters should be imprisoned. Getting a lot of for bad information that's killing people, and those people should be put in jail that you're having on your show. Uh-oh. Okay. Sean Baker, you need to be put in jail. That's right. No joke, he has said that. Let's do 100 calories a minute, so we don't raise insulin which is a fat storage hormone that promotes say they're up the uh, that's, that's an oversimplification, but fine. And also, what about the carbohydrates that are readily broken down in beans into glucose that absolutely does raise insulin more than any other stimulus? That promotes say the replication of cancer. So the beans are absorbed very, very slow. Well, you have to have cancer first, but okay. Mm -hmm. And the bacteria they produce, the bacteria that, that now are so basically what I'm saying is even if insulin is involved in that, which I believe it is because it's involved in cell proliferation, that doesn't make insulin bad. That's not what makes insulin bad. And actually nothing makes insulin bad. Insulin is a good hormone, meaning that it's indicated to have been produced in the amount that is produced by the body given the circumstances because that is encoded for by your genes, those genes having evolved for billions of years. There's an external stimulus involved. We here in this space are sensible. And so we recognize that our bodies are made exactly how they're supposed to be made. Western medicine is fully built upon the idea that our bodies are inherently flawed. Actually, it's the exact opposite. Our philosophy is based on the fact that our body, the fact that our body is inherently not flawed. Anyway. The soil promotes the growth of these healthy bacteria that now start to live in our gut and start to coat the villi and now create, now lower the glycemic load of other foods we eat that are not beans. Well, which... instead of trying to lower the glycemic load, why don't you just not consume the glucose at all? Because even if you don't lower the, even if you lower the glycemic load, you're still getting an influx of glucose to a contraindicated degree. In fact, there has been a study done that studied type one diabetics and measured the amount of insulin they need for certain meals. And I know these studies are not the best and I'm definitely one to say that, okay? But I found it very interesting that whenever they fed these people a mixed meal of fat and carbohydrates, fat being something that absolutely does blunt a glucose spike, they didn't present with spikes in their glucose. However, they required 42% more insulin over the course of the entire 24 hour period as compared to when they only consumed glucose in a meal and very little fat, like very little fat. So you still require more insulin, first of all, which is not good for other reasons, but it's because you still have elevated glucose. It's just slightly more elevated, but it stays elevated longer. So what's your point? 
Anyway, don't eat a plant-based diet, okay? Don't be vegan. Don't be Joel Furman. Scientists call the second meal effect. That means if you regularly eat beans, mm -hmm. your whole diet, your whole dietary portfolio now is low, has a lower glycemic effects because of that. Well, we covered that, didn't we? The buildup from the regular consumption of beans. Okay, cool. So I also, whenever I eat food, have a very, very low glycemic load. Do you know why, Joel? It's because my meals don't consist of carbohydrates. Okay. So on, on, on that beautiful bean, I, I love that. What was that? Boston baked beans and they had the dog roll that beautiful bean footage. Uh, on that on that bean footage note, some people, and, and I've had them even call into the show, say, yeah, Michael, you're saying that beans are good, but haven't you heard the news about lectins? Beans are terrible. You need to stay away from beans. Yeah, and lectins are basically carbohydrate binding proteins. They're plant proteins. I've said on the channel before that they're incorporated into the protein number on food labels. They're actually not, so I was wrong on that. I looked further into it. They're excluded from that, which may or may not actually be more dubious, right? Because now you actually don't know how much more protein you're getting that is harming you. But anyway, they're carbohydrate binding compounds that engage in molecular mimicry and they cause the body to launch an immune response on domestic cells of the body. So it causes inflammation and damage. It's a problem. They're they're a problem. Fortunately, beans and lectins aren't required for the human diet, so you can safely exclude them. You know, every once in a while, every five or ten years, we have some crazy idea comes out that some person can... Right, yeah, like veganism. Like veganism, Joel. And also, yeah, I, I love these epithets that you want to... Oh, these crazy people, these crazy people. You know, if you're going to use epithets like that, they better be grounded in truth, okay? They're not crazy. It's just your desperate attempt to cast spursions on people that actually have a point. Lectins harm the body. Unequivocally, unassailably, absolutely. Ricin, the deadliest lectin known to man, can kill people within a matter of minutes. I'm not comparing other lectins in regular commercial food to ricin. Of course, that would be silly. But the point is that it's all a fader. They're all doing harm. Ricin is just at the very top, but you've got others like wheat germaglutinin that actually, once again, they engage in molecular mimicry. They mimic insulin by binding into insulin receptors, and they tend to never let go either until the cell has to divide. So they can cause hormonal imbalances, perhaps, through that mechanism. It's a problem. It's literally throwing a wrench in your system. They're binding onto receptors when other compounds are supposed to be binding onto those receptors. They're interfering with your physiology. So if you feel comfortable doing that, you go ahead and keep doing that. I don't. We have disparate operating systems compared to plants. Therefore, we shouldn't be consuming them. Our operating systems are also disparate for, to other animals, but not nearly as much. Nowhere near as much. We're most similar to other animals. Some fad or gimmick to try to scam people. You know. Yeah, like veganism, right? Good. Okay, I'm glad we got that out of the way too. Make a buck or whatever their motivation. Right, to make a buck or whatever their motivation is. Yeah, like ideological theology, like your your moral doctrine that is absolutely anti-human. It's not pro-animal, it's anti-human. Let's get that out of the way too. Maybe some people are funded by, you know, big industry to try to confuse people about health and nutrition. Right, like vegans, good. But this is one of the, this is a notorious scam. No, 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 no. Like veganism, first of all. Veganism is. It's a notorious scam. It's a perpetual scam. It's not a scam to say that plants have lectins in them and that they engage in molecular mimicry, differentiate into domestic cells, and therefore cause the body to kill domestic cells. They cause the body to create antibodies to their own cells. That's what it is. Really, because we know that Bean consumption is associated with longer life and every... So what? Wow. Bean consumption is associated with longer life. Great. So are you seriously going to suggest that out of the hundreds, thousands, arguably millions of confounding variables within such an association that beans are the one thing that was causing that to be the case? That's silly. And even to play devil's advocate here, I mean, saying that, well, meat consumption, pork consumption, and this amount, this reported amount based on respondent data was associated with an increased, you know, lifespan of, of, of around four years. So f***ing what? That doesn't tell us anything. Great. What that does tell us, though, is that in the case of blue zones, the fact that these people are actually, I don't know, eating lots of meat in many of these places, that the reason for the longer lifespans in blue zones is not due to plants. Really, it's not due to a lack of meat consumption, as most of these people will say. That's really more accurate. Because how do you explain the blue zones that consume lots of meat? That's where associations do play a role. Anyway. Ever studied. So basically what I can say here is, I don't know, meat consumption is also associated pre and post adjustment, by the way. So pre and post fabrication with longer life. Look into Hong Kong. So what's your point, Joel? The, the, well, if we look at the blue zones around the world. Oh, wow. I thought that I was being superfluous with my information here. Good thing I got it out of the way, though. So now I don't really have to say anything else because I already just covered this. I foreshadowed it. They're so predictable. Population eat lots of beans. If we look at the map... <laughs> They also do a lot of other things and they eat a lot of other things as well. And they don't eat a lot of other things. 
the beans eating eaten in blue zones, we found that those part those um, groups that eat more beans live longer, and those are the people that are live live so longest of those three regular beans so much so hey joel did you know that association does not equal causation did you know that we live in a society today that is so destitute in terms of their knowledge that i get to sit here in front of a microphone and in front of this computer and in front of this camera and look at the screen and say two things primarily gluconeogenesis carbs aren't required and association does not equal causation and actually make a comfortable living alongside my girlfriend of course because i just started this channel it's pretty incipient i get paid for that you guys are to blame seriously guys Come on! That for every tablespoon of beans eaten, you see 8% increase in longevity. And we. <laughs> so, an association, first of all, and reductionism, because you're attributing that to beans alone, reported bean consumption, first of all, and this epidemiology that you're referring to was probably adjusted for at the end of the study to control for risk factors, those risk factors not being risk factors because risk is a cause and effect statement, and that requires causal empirical data, which doesn't exist in the area of human nutrition science, so already a problem, based on the philosophy that basically stacking a bunch of univariate regressions on top of each other gets you closer and closer to establishing a causal relationship when it does the exact opposite. It's not science, it's fabrication, it's bread and circuses, and it's theology, Joel. This is stupid. Lectins, the dangerous part of greens, the lectins that are only a bit, only dangerous in things you don't cook when you sprout them. No, they're still there, actually, in many cases. <laughs> depends on the lectin. If you pressure cook beans, you get most of them out, maybe all of them. Sure. You know what you don't eliminate from them? The fiber, which is also a problem. Enteric nervous system destroying, actually, perniciously and insidiously. Once again, if you can't digest something, probably shouldn't be f***ing eating it. So good stuff, Joel. And what about oxalates that are also in beans? Those aren't eliminated hardly at all in cooking, no matter if you pressure cook them or not. Cook them. They don't have gluten. Um, red blood cells, they don't have any danger anymore. So beans are rich in, in powerfully longevity mode. Okay, so basically what you have to at least say then, even if that were fully true, is that you should be pressure cooking all of your beans. Do you tell people to do that? No, I bet you don't. So even then you're contradicting yourself because, it, okay, so you're saying they're harmful if they're not fully cooked out, but do you tell people to pressure cook their beans fully? I don't know. Maybe you do, but I don't think you do. I think you say, well, it doesn't, get, who gives a f Vegan for life, bro. Powerfully longevity promoting anti-cancer materials. No, absolute irresponsibility there from you, Joel. And it seems very flagrant. It seems like you're trying to desperately convince yourself in this sort of petulant manner whenever someone actually brings to your perspective or exposure the absolute prevalence and, pre and presence of damaging compounds for human consumption present within plant foods. And you just get this, mediators need to go to jail. They need to go to jail. They're harming people. They need to be imprisoned. Silly. But anyway, anti-cancer is a cause and effect statement covered that. So no. And longevity promoting. We just covered that it was an association. Did you know, by the way, promoting is a cause and effect statement? Once again, did you know that association doesn't equal causation? Wow. Deja vu. Uh, rewind my video, guys, and, and, and you can find the amount of times that I've said it. And this book you're talking about, I don't have to know if I should mention the name of the book or the name of the, the physician who wrote it. <sighs> Dr. Stephen Gundry, The Plant Paradox. No one mentioned that, actually. He didn't mention that. Dr. Gundry isn't the only one talking about lectins. I talk about lectins. Didn't supply a shred of evidence to support that contention. And Okay, uh, there's evidence that lectins cause damage in the body. Okay, ricin is one of them. There's evidence that plants are toxic, even by the fact that whenever you go into the wild and you pick out a plant, there's a high likelihood that you will be poisoned and die from eating that plant, from things like lectins. <laughs> You don't really need that much evidence, but actually he did supply a shred of it. I read his book back whenever I was on that tra on that train years ago. I'm not sitting here telling people to go buy it. Probably shouldn't because you can get better information elsewhere, like my book, Contraindicated. Link in the description below. But um, anyway, people check the references in that book when he said when he had a footnote mm -hmm. and he made a claim. If you check what the reference said, it did not support that claim. So it was for it was actually the book is the foundation of the book is a lie. They'll say something. No, not the foundation. That could have been the case for one of those references, and it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Stephen is not, unfortunately, he's just succumbed to the basic bad of most people where they build their business model upon something and they, and they get a lot of money by doing it and espousing certain things, and so therefore they're stuck. They won't come clean. But Stephen is someone that definitely goes against the grain, even in the vegan community, so, you know, and, and he sticks by that, so no pun intended. You know, lectins. Um, beans were shown to cause irritation of the stomach lining and increased risk of autoimmune conditions. And then All you right, so still so with the cause and the risk statements, so that's a problem. Anyway, lectins cause damage. We know this. And then reference to a study. And then you pull the study, read what the study said. It didn't show anything like that claim we just made. Then he has another claim. And then he, so every claim in that book was not supported 
by scientific evidence or studies. And the whole baseline theory of the book... Every single claim, really? Yeah, okay. ...quickly disproven. So there's no valuable information in that book. It's really sad that it had such a negative effect on people, on the potential for people to achieve good health because it has them afraid to eat fruits and vegetables and beans. And that's what the book was intended to do, you know, because that's what people... Cause there's billions of dollars being spent all the time to sabotage people's good health. We know the food industry. Yeah, like uh, in the vegan sphere, basically. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep repeating myself here. Plants in general are toxic, even the ones that we have hybridized to be safer to eat. There are less harmful ones like lettuce in small amounts. Yeah, okay, whatever. That's less toxic. It's still got fiber in it, which will cause bloating, so it's bad. And you've got things like some button mushrooms. Like, okay, yeah, great. It doesn't matter whether it's the meat industry, the sugar industry, or the processed food industry, or the fast food industry, or the, or the, or the bottlers, whatever. What about the vegan uh, industry, Joel? What about the vegan one? I, I noticed that you left one out. We know that there's a big... So, so apparently they're the saints. There's no interest there. The meat industry is involved in trying to trick people into buying their products based on false science. Sure, that, that's definitely the case. Okay, it doesn't mean that meat eating is bad, by the way. It doesn't mean that the conclusion that they're arriving at is, is, is wrong, for example. But I noticed that you left out the vegan community, so good. There's a lot of money out there to try to confuse people, whether it's the egg industry, the dairy industry. They're, they're all trying to produce studies to negate. And, and, the, and the vegan industry, right? Yeah, good. Studies that are not commercially affiliated are showing. So people are confused and throw up their hands and say, I don't know the what. People are confused because the studies shown by both parties, all parties, do not show f anything. But they're said to show things. Like one study you're shown is, oh, this shows that this thing increases your risk of whatever disease by this percent. While another study will be shown right in front of your damn face that says, well, that very same thing has been shown to decrease your risk of the same ailment by this percent. You know why these things exist and those reportings exist? Because people are not performing science. These are associations being reported with causal language. That's what it is. Risk is a cause and effect claim. And here's, and, and this guy, you know, came up with a creative way he could make himself stand out in a unique fashion and, and come up with some, maybe... Some You're so bitter, Joel. It's hilarious. So bitter. It's so funny to watch. Or some idea how he could make a you know, become rich off this scam. Yeah, look at that. Look, look at that video right here with the thumbnail. Look at how much better they made Joel look than he actually looks. So it's a scam. Yeah, so, so veganism is a scam, is, is really what he meant to say. That's the real scam here. And yes, there are other scams that exist as well. Most of them online, actually. Most of the dietary fads, they are scams, of course. They're based on, you know, things that he was he was saying. But one of the biggest ones is veganism. And the, the carnivore diet is, is not one. There, there are people here that will try and do similar things where they say, well, this study actually is, was shown to increase your risk of this. And or, this study shows that meat was actually shown to reduce your risk of this by whatever. It's just is nonsensical. I'm sorry. But it doesn't mean the carnivore is wrong. In fact, it's indicated for our species. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And most importantly, the link on the bottom of the screen. What is that link? Well, that is a link that will bring you to an amazing site with amazing products from an amazing brand known as Cerule. If you purchase product through that link, you will get a permanent 10% and permanent free shipping discount on your order when signing up for monthly deliveries. That is the caveat. But if you do not know what these products are and you're completely confused and you're also wondering, well, Eddie, if the carnivore diet does not need to be supplemented on with anything because you get everything you need from it, then why are you selling a supplement? Turns out it's not really a supplement. And so if you don't know what these are, do not buy these products. Do not even click that link until you check out the video in the top right corner of the screen, at least, which is a Cerule products video, which is a complete elucidation and explanation of what those products are, who should take them, why you should take them, when to take them, etc., etc. And I would especially further migrate to the description below to find a video between myself and Professor Bart K on these products in further detail, as well as, even more importantly, in my opinion, the company of Cerule itself itself if you're going to give your money to them, or at least are considering it. And also you can email me behind the scenes at edgookie14 at gmail.com if you would like to find out how to earn those products for free, because who in the right mind wouldn't want that? And who in his right mind, as someone who promotes a product, would want people paying for them? So with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else who is extremely bitter and insecure of his own beliefs in my humble estimation, and someone that actually is scamming people and is a liar and evil in the fact that he wants and desires meat eaters and people that promote eating meat, especially people that promote eating meat primarily, to be jailed and imprisoned. So, till then.